West African leaders block, it's called ECOWAS, they say they have not ruled out using force to restore order in Niger. This comes after President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted in a coup last month after a summit in the Nigerian capital Abuja yesterday. The bloc pledging to enforce the sanctions and the travel bans on those preventing the return of a democratically elected government. Meanwhile, Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, uh, saying no option is off the table and force would be the last resort. All is not lost yet. The outcome of this summit is a testament to the power of collaboration and unity. We have reaffirmed our commitment to the people of Niger and to the progress of our entire ECOWAS community. We remain steadfast in our commitment to supporting Niger in the journey towards peaceful and democratic stability in the country. Well, let's get some analysis now, and we're joined by Africa analyst uh, Kofi Kwaku, who talks to us from Pretoria this morning. Mr. Kwaku, thank you very much for your time. Let's begin with those strong words from uh, the Nigerian leader. I also uh, heard from the uh, president of Ivory Coast, Mr. Alison Watara. Very, very strong words indeed that this cannot be allowed and action must be taken. How far do you think they are willing to go as far as the diplomatic process? Is their, is their patience stretched too thin at this point? Good morning and thanks for having me. Indeed, these are strong words and uh, they're ringing the bells of war and we're sliding slowly into something that we shouldn't be sliding into, a possible chaos in West Africa. These words are not really good enough. Uh, to really create what is called a positive peace in the region. And the continuous, you know, belligerent wording and positioning themselves, especially the, uh, the, head of, the head of ECOWAS, are not helping at all. Now, they have to be saving faces. One of the things that they did, they first uh, threatened the junta uh, in Niger, and gave them an ultimatum, and that ultimatum and that date lapsed. And they have to save faces, frankly. Mm. And by saving faces, they need to be seen as being tough. And that is not going to be helpful. And in fact, they've been rebuffed many times there by the junta. And it makes it difficult for them to really, uh, you know, present this, this situation. And that kind of uh, situation is not helping all of us. And we're very concerned. I mean, a lot of Africans are concerned that if there is a war in that region in West Africa against Niger, or that is an intervention, military intervention, it will be chaos in that region. There is already chaos in the region. So intervening military will add to it. And of course, let me clarify this. Uh, it's not that I'm supporting, or many of us are supporting the, the junta, mm. but it is clear that most of these uh, sick democracies haven't delivered. And we have seen across West Africa, a trend that's very worrying that I would call um, sort of populist military trends where the population realizing that their lives, their well-beings are not being maintained well. Democracies, the so-called democracies under which they're living are not delivering. So yeah. they're looking for alternatives. Mr. Kwaku, a very interesting dynamic if you bring in the Wagner group, and this is a group that... Uh, really became known uh, worldwide now after the war in Ukraine. These are the people that, if you really want to argue, have their roots in the Russian Federation, so to speak. If indeed it does happen that the military junta in Niger has sought support from that grouping, how would that... Um, how would that dynamic influence the kind of belligerence that we are seeing from Niger? Add to that, of course, the fact that there is Mali that is supporting Niger and also Burkina Faso 
that has thrown its weight behind Niger? Um, the the outcomes will be extraordinary uh, damaging in the sense that it will escalate the war, the tension, the belligerence in that region. And let's say it frankly, I mean, uh, about five, six, ten years ago, Wagner was nowhere else to be seen. Suddenly, Wagner becomes a specter everybody's talking about because it's Russian. So it's easier to use Wagner as a flag to go around and then accuse the Russians of fomenting all sorts of trouble. Hmm. The deeper problems exist in Africa, we know them, but we're not debating them, we're not discussing them, we're not addressing them. And Africans, at least the populist people, are now rising up and the military people are taking advantage of this populist uprising. Wagner is just a bogeyman that's been used by the West mainly to tell everybody that, you know, we have a problem. Uh, somebody else is trying to uh, uh, influence Africans and Africans cannot think by their own, on their own. Now, even if we were to agree that Wagner uh, was present or will be doing business with the Junta in Niger, mm. that is a serious geopolitical angle to look at. And in fact, it will throw in some very, very interesting fight there. And Wagner's reputation, not quite good largely, but it seems the military people who are taking over seems to like Wagner because Wagner now has become a specter or at least an alternative power to help them to resist their Western influence and then get them out of the choking yoke of Western colonialism. In the meantime, while all of this ferments, Mr. Kwaku, you have President Bazoum, who has been kept in his house, and the wording is that he is held hostage. And this is where President Alison Watara was really uh, emphatic on to say, you cannot do that to an elected, a democratically elected president. By what, <laughs> by when would a military intervention start being implemented by the ECOWAS, Mr. Kwaku? Because the military junta in Niger has already called the bluff of the ECOWAS leadership uh, by not adhering to that deadline, which was some two weeks ago. Now they back to that very same spot two weeks ago where they said diplomacy, if that fails, then definitely military intervention. Well, this is a contradiction about this whole thing. You know, how do you dislodge what you think you didn't like by using the same approach, which means you're going to use military intervention to get rid of the military uh, cool that you didn't like. Now, some may approach that as normal and something that works, but indeed it's contradictory. It doesn't make real sense. And it seems like peace is a difficult commodity and ingredient for many people to understand and then apply. I mean, Barzoom is now being held captive in, uh, in, uh, by the junta because it's become like a price to hold on to. And if they don't hold on to him, they have no bargaining power. And they're using him as a chess piece to be able to have a bargaining power to find a way for peace. Now, if there is no peace and ECOWAS, at least the leaders, continue to threaten, as you said, suggested, and we know the evidence shows that Côte d'Ivoire is uh, willing to send soldiers in Niger, as well as Senegal. And they are making the situation a lot more difficult. And in their own countries, the evidence is showing that they are not really managing things well. Inequality, unemployment, the youth are really uh, running to, to, to France and Paris mm. instead of staying in their own countries. And that tells you that there are problems they're trying to avoid, but they themselves are sitting on very unconstitutional approaches to democracy. That's what we're calling sick democracies. And the, the uh, democratic deficit in most of these countries is now calling for specific ways to be dealt with. And most people don't have the strength to uh, unseat most of these presidents who are sitting there abusing democratic powers and executives. And people are saying, we need a different alternative. And that's one of the reasons we see in those schools. Yeah. And by the way, 
Southern Africa is not really immune to these things because we have the same symptoms around here. And uh, I think last week or so, um, the United Nations Dem uh, Development Program has really hit South Africa with a damning report about youth unemployment. And these are things to address, not by Zoom, not a democratic uh, uh, sickness that doesn't offer. Until democracy is really delivered, we will see the same trends of military pools across the African continent, sadly. Final question to you, sir. We've already touched on the international dynamic by bringing into this particular situation the Wagner Group. These are people who are from Russia, we understand. If it does happen that the Wagner Group does pledge support to the military uh, leaders or the coup leaders in Niger, might we see the ECOWAS seeking support from countries like France, Italy, basically to come in and help if indeed it does get to a war situation. The reason I'm asking you this is that President Bazoum has been labeled as a strategic ally by countries that have sort of depended on him to stop the migrants from getting onto the boats and sailing into the European countries. Might, might we see that dynamic? Yes, we could. I mean, this is a really, really interesting but concerning um, angle, geopolitical angle that's really, in fact, I'm glad you're bringing it about because it's not quite talked about. The focus is on uh, democracy on Bazoum and so forth, but behind it, in fact, ECOWAS, which is a very weak institution, is spurred by the Europeans and the United States. There's no doubt about that. Um, most of their, you know, uh, their support comes from uh, Europe. I mean, they're funding, so they're calling the two ends behind. And there is, uh, it's a bit of a strange thing to say, but uh, in fact, the juntas uh, in Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso are really excited to see the involvement of uh, uh, Wagner. And, and in fact, uh, you know, the Wagner people are itching for a fight and they can't wait to prove something against the West in Africa. And the concern for many of us is that the world now has suddenly moved its attention from Ukraine to Africa. This is a dangerous shift that we need to pay attention to. The same African leaders who are calling for peace in Ukraine and having a 10-point peace, peace plan are not using the, ten, the same peace plan to try to solve the problem in Niger. And that is a contradiction we're very worried about. And if war breaks out, we don't know and we're not quite sure who's going to be able to bring peace again on this continent. Mr. Kofi Kwaku, an Africa analyst, let me thank you very much for your time and uh, insights. It is a, a very worrying situation developing in Niger.